On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, I have for you guys one of the rarest and most rad vehicles in the entire United States. There might be 10 of these here. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jay Argo and behind me is a 1985 Westfalia James Cook high roof Mercedes-Benz chassis 309D. It's a real long name for a very, very, very rare camper van. And today we're gonna go check this thing out because it's honestly incredibly cool. You've probably never seen one before. I hadn't seen one before. And when the guy that bought my AMC Pacer said, do you wanna drive this? I said, yeah, absolutely I wanna come drive this. Who wouldn't wanna see a vintage camper van that was the pinnacle of camping back in the day? In fact, the Westfalia James Cook is still the pinnacle of camper vans today. They're built on Sprinter chassis now, and they start at about $126,000 and easily, easily run into the quarter million with options. So it's pretty crazy. If you had this Westfalia back in the day, you would have been the coolest guy at the campground. So let's check this thing out. First of all, we will drive it here in a minute, but I do need to tell you guys, it might be the slowest vehicle I've ever driven. I think my forklift can accelerate faster than this thing can if you use first gear. A few stats about it. First gear is 6.15 to one. That's unbelievable, the ratio in this thing. If you wanna ghost ride the whip, this is the whip to do it in. It probably goes, I don't know, maybe 10 wide open throttle in first gear, and 10 might be a stretch. So it's probably more like five. You could just toss it in first gear and have a crawler, which I get it. It's a lot of weight for a non-turbo diesel engine, a very old, very small non-turbo diesel. And we'll talk more about that here in just a minute. But it weighs a lot. It's huge. I mean, just look at the thing. It's a giant sailboat you have to push down a highway and speaking of highways, you probably shouldn't be on them. I actually was just reading a thread about this where they said the max speed's well known to be 55. It has an orange mark at 50 mile an hour. I, I haven't gotten it to 50 in fifth gear. And 40 to 45 mile per hour is the actual cruising speed of this thing. So if you think I'm kidding about that first gear, just imagine, you know, three quarter throttle in fifth gear going down the road and you're going 40 miles an hour. It's slow, but it sure is cool. So let's check this thing out. First of all, with the high roof on it, it's very, very tall. I was gonna bring this thing in the shop so we could do all this inside, talk about it. Wouldn't have to deal with the wind, but it's 3.1 meters tall, which is a hair over 10 feet. And I think I might clear the door, but I'm not gonna take any chances with this thing. It's not mine. So it's incredibly tall. You might not be able to make every drive through with this. In fact, I wanted some food a little bit ago and I was like, you know what? I better go to Dairy Queen or something where I don't drive through because this thing has to get parked in the parking lot and you have to go in. I mean, it's kind of cool. If you're traveling with your family, you're probably gonna actually stop, go in, eat, sit down, relax for a bit, and then hop back in this thing and go on to your next destination. Now, let's go on a tour of this thing. I don't know anything about it, so we're gonna learn all of this together at the same time. We've got some marker lights right here. Toyota marker lights, that's interesting, with a Mercedes Westfalia chassis. Ah, is this shore power? What an interesting shore power connector. Huh, it flips up and it's a little three pin. It says it's a 220, 240 connector right there. And it's nothing we ever see here in the US. It's not UL listed. It's a C norm. Yeah, none of those markings are US. So that's kind of an interesting power connector right there. So this is either the heater or the water heater right there under that Troma connector. And that looks like a condensate drain. I'm not sure, but that's what it looks like there. Here's our water tank there, our potable water. So you open this up with the key. It looks like it might already be unlocked. Or you might actually have to use the key. That's interesting. So that's the water tank. And it looks like the water tank itself might just be that guy right there. Uh, it doesn't look like a gray tank or a black tank. It kind of looks like that is the water tank. So this is interesting. I'm not really sure what goes where on that. And then it looks like you might connect shore water right there because it has the hose uh, that goes into the top of that tank. This is either stove or diesel heater exhaust, that little tube right there. And this looks like it might be a propane heater. Oh, another keyhole right there. 
So you can do something on it. This very much looks like a pressurized tank, so I can't tell if it's propane or if it's a diesel heater or something like that. The Westfalia sits on 14 inch wheels wrapped in 20575R14 Michelin X tires. A very good looking cross country tire with the little Michelin man hiding in there. So you know he's genuine. But that tire fits this thing wonderfully. It looks so good. This is a cab over design and it's so easy to see and drive. You're sitting like right here and you can see all the way down, almost, oh, you can probably see to right here, a foot in front of this thing, you have great visibility. So you're sitting high, you have excellent visibility. It does have a wonderful driving position and it makes it very easy to turn in and maneuver this. We've got the Mercedes badges here in front, the Mercedes roundel and the big Mercedes star. And on this tiny little pop-up hood, you can see the washer sprayer for this huge windscreen. It has a gigantic windscreen and some old school Hella H4 headlights right there. Does this say, oh yeah, that's actually a nice tow hook right there if you get into any trouble. And what do we have here? Bundens von Van Zwalington, 438Z3361 license plate. I hope I pronounced it right. All right, coming around the passenger side here, we've got the passenger door. These seats are actually comfortable. I gotta say they're very comfortable for what they are. This is kind of interesting. There's a vent down here. I wonder if this is the fresh air vent in the bottom of the door. I don't think that's over on the driver's side. And then right here, you can see an air duct that either pulls or exhausts through that vent. It can't really be an exhaust because it would be tough to, you know, it would have to be sealed to the door. But that seems like an intake that pulls through the passenger door. Kind of cool. These seats are really cool looking. Look, they're like a mono post design that comes up and then cantilevers all of your weight back here. And they work well. Are they spring loaded? Is that why it says spring and housing? <laughs> I, ice ring housing. But I don't know for sure. There's a lot of levers on these things that I haven't experienced. So cool looking seats too. Don't those look futuristic? And we've got the armrests that are very, very Mercedes with the adjuster down here. And uh, dual armrests on both seats, driver and passenger. So they work just fine. If you, I like having that driver one down. It's kind of different having a manual and that armrest down, but it, it works out. You can drive it just fine. Let's keep going around the Westphalia before we really go inside. So we have this huge sliding door back here. And then down here we have the Eberschplacher Farzen Zong Vordem Tanken. Ah, look at that. There's an English translation. Before filling up switch off heater. So it must be a diesel heater, I can only assume. Let's smell it. It does smell like diesel. So I guess you put diesel in there and I'm not sure where you fill up the actual diesel this thing drives on. Honestly, I looked around and I have not seen where you fill it up. So this could be the actual gas tank and it could just be the heater tank. I actually kind of think that is the main tank that it drives off after looking underneath it. Very cool James Cook graphics on the side of this with an awning up here on the side of the high roof. I'm not gonna open the awning because again, I don't wanna break it. And I also worry a lot about old cloth that's rolled up in an aluminum housing there. So it looks amazing. I bet it works just fine, but I'm not gonna open that up. Love the graphics on the side of this thing. They could not look better. The off-white into the browns and then the black. Oh, it just looks so good. It's perfect for this thing. And it's honestly a very cool color as well. We've got the Mercedes badge down here on the back. Big Mercedes-Benz logo. Ah, Westfalia hitch right there, huh? All right, so this must be trailer power. Interesting connector we've never seen in our lives right there. One, two, three, four, five six, seven. So a seven pin, but like a precursor to the real seven pin that we're all used to today. Tow hook back here, nice hard point, and a spare tire underneath that, and that, it's a very European hitch, huh? Nothing like that is ever seen here in America, but some of the other Euro cars we've seen have like power hitches that look just like this that come out. So really weird seeing this fully German kind of build here in the US. And then on the back by the giant window, which actually provides excellent visibility while you're driving, is this huge fiberglass case to shove whatever you want in. Let's see if there's anything in there. Is it locked? Oh, it's locked, but it sounds like a 
big empty fiberglass box. So with that, you have a bunch of additional storage outside your camper. I mean, you could put a ton of stuff in there and it looks like you could take it off and this rack flips up and you could put like bicycles or really whatever you want. You could strap it all on the rear there. Tons of storage options and we haven't even gone inside yet. So let's do exactly that. Wow, the door handle's on the wrong part of the back. I was expecting it to be right there. It's, it's right here, okay? So it flips out and then slides backwards on the track. Okay, cool. It looks like it locked in place. Look at that. That is one very, very open camper van. So much room and it was just detailed. Look at the lines in the carpet. It was just detailed because it's headed to bring a trailer here in like within the next week it should go live. So if you wanna buy one of these, the market for these old ones is probably between 20 and $40,000. This might be one of the cleanest ones ever. I've just seen other sales around 40. It could end up in the 50 or $60,000 range because one, it's outrageously rare and two, it's clean. So we get to take a very special look at this thing today before it heads off to probably California. So I think this is supposed to sleep for people. Somewhere in the late 70s to early 80s is when they started building these. So it's definitely one of the earliest ones and it's still incredible for its age. It's unbelievable what I'm looking at right now and I can't wait for you to see it too. But they've been making these for well over 40 years and I mean, if they were making this back then, it's definitely quality. So right here, when you open the door, it looks like you've got the HVAC controls. So cool, heat and maybe temperature right there. I don't know if, what those are supposed to translate to because it just has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the dial, is it Celsius? I mean, obviously it can't be because seven would be 150 plus degrees or something. I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe it's just fan speed. There's a good chance that's the fan speed. Uh, you've got nice pockets on these seats that clearly flip down into the beds. So they match. Honestly, very cool look right there. It looks like this seat also slides. Oh yeah, I bet you pull that knob right up there and the seat slides forward. I don't know if we're gonna try it, but we might get that far. So you could have six people riding in this. Check it out. You'd have driver, passenger, two here and two there. And that's exactly how they have the seat belts set up as well. Ashtrays, you know, smoking was still a big thing back in the day. And uh, I guess you could sleep two there and sleep two up top because it looks like it also has a flip down bed up there. So let's head on in and really start digging into this because it's incredible. Look at the high roof. Wow, I did not think it was gonna feel like I was in a luxury custom home once I got inside here. Unbelievable. I mean, five, nine or whatever, I, and I can't reach the roof. It's so tall. I can touch it if I jump on my tippy toes there but that's absolutely crazy how tall this roof is. And even if you were in this bed, you still have 30 inches. It sure looks like 30 inches. So that's very cool. Also, I love that I just mentioned that it has a smoker's package with ashtrays for every seat. But right here, we got this no puffin sticker, which is hilarious. So somebody didn't want anyone smoking inside their West Folly. We got the blah punked 25 watt speakers right there. I mean, the surrounds are gone, but what would you expect? It's, you know, 40 years old. We've got a power fan right here. The interior lights are fluorescent. I wonder if the key needs to be on. You got storage pockets right there. Very nice. The windows clearly flip out. Bonoplex acryl glass. So Bonoplex acrylic, I would assume, is what we're going for. Let's try to flip this out. So flip that up. Ah, you gotta open them all. I see, so we'll open that one. Open this one here. And now, it should stay, right? That is so cool. You just turn the stay rod right there and it stays wherever you want. Even without air conditioning, on a nice day, it's about 90 outside today, it's very reasonable in here. Since we're still standing here around the bed slash seats, and it looks like this is also the dining room table, let's sit down. Oh, this is comfy. This is comfy, guys. These are excellent seats. This would be pretty cool to ride around in. You'd probably want the whole seat to yourself so you could really stretch out, and there's not a lot of leg room. This is nothing like that Silverado EV where I had 30 inches of leg room. I have negative leg room, but it's still comfy. Look at this. My knees are backwards and my shoes are sideways. Obviously, this slides. I don't know how to slide it. This knob here is the release to take it out of bed mode. Um, 
Hey, that's how you slide it, huh? That's it. You just lift up on the black handle. That's how you slide it and it locks back in place. All right, now I've got leg room and they still have leg room too. So everybody's got leg room. Everybody's happy. Here's the table for you to eat on. It flips up right there. Work on, you could definitely work while you're going down the road, which is cool. Those old school ashtrays. I had to do it. I had to pull the release for this seat and look what we found. That appears to be the freshwater tank. It's got a level sender too, which is very cool. Uh, and maybe that white wire looks like it's to the water pump. And then under this hat are the batteries that power the camper. Take a look at that, some big deep cycles in there. So that is what's under the back seat. And then it's locked back in place. And it looks like it might also be a table, not 100%, but it looks like it also flips up into a table or a prep table. Let's open up some of the cabinets here. Oh, nice locks. How nice. Perfect pulls on those. It looks like the water heater is inside this little cover right here. And it does look like this is actually propane gas or something like that. That is not a liquid fuel kind of uh, line set right there. It very much looks like propane. And this looks like all the water supply to the water heater, which is interesting. This has all the amenities. All right, more bathroom expanding into there. Pots and pans storage, really whatever you want. Nice cabinets, very well laid out. I'm excited to see this if this is the bathroom. Oh, it turns. How cool is that? What a nice door pull. Full shower, pull out toilet right there. So gray water only. That explains that lower tank. There's no black water, only gray water. So fresh water in the cabin, gray water down there, and you can drain it to the ground. That explains the valve. And black water you got to keep with you from that little tiny toilet. You'd have to take it somewhere and dump it. You've got light in your shower. This is one very small shower. We have to jump in here and check it out. Here's your hot and cold water from the sink. <laughs> Nice, cool little mirror that looks like it. Oh, nice, it clicks back. Nice little metal shelves as well. Oh, and the sink hose pulls up and is the shower. So you just pull the sink hose all the way up here. I don't wanna do it because it might not go back in. And a lot of times these hoses are sticky. This one's not, it's actually in excellent condition, but I know better. I've dealt with plenty of old camper stuff. Those hoses are usually grody. This one's not at all, but the sink and the shower head are the same thing. You pull the hose all the way up and put it on this hook to take a shower. And then you put it back down here in the sink and finish up. And the water heater looks like it's just kind of crammed in right under the sink as well. <laughs> How cool is that? I love the little stowage for the toilet too. It works out really well. It might be cramped in here, but it's so cool. You know, the old stuff, they had to use space properly. We don't do that anymore. We don't need to use space we can just build it bigger. Like it's just normal to see 36 foot campers out on the road where you have a nice bathroom that rivals most master baths and houses from a few years back. All right, there we go. She's closed back up. Cool, cool bathroom. Leaving the bathroom, we're gonna check out the kitchen real quick. We've got a bunch of cabinetry up here. Oh, personal black and white TV. Gotta have that. Oh, this is how to reset the breaker. It's down here, the main breaker for the shore power it looks like. And what do we have here? Some more storage, lots of salt and pepper, toilet paper in here. These sounds are pretty funny. Lots of storage all the way around. Not very deep, but you can put all your food stuffs up here. Nice pantry. Fire extinguisher? Oh, lighter. The opposite. The opposite of what I thought it was. And a bunch more storage right here for, I don't know, games, family stuff, food, whatever you have to do. And don't worry, I am saving the best for last. I wanted to just open up all the cabinets first. And, oh, the workshop manual, check that out, guys. Fuel down there, some propane, so it's camp fuel. The wheel wells are inside the cabinet right there. Very cool old bowl set. And Kirkland Signature right there, baby. We got the Costco special and some gold Solo cups. And what do we have here? Wow, very cool. Love how that looks like it's one door, but it's actually two. And a fridge! Now the fridge is full of play food. None of this is real. That's cloth donuts, but it sure is cool looking. An Electrolux camping fridge. Shore power, battery power. I bet it works. And propane, that's nuts temperature right there and I assume that might be like light 
or something like that. Pilot light, maybe. So how cool is that? It's This is like having a Sub-Zero or a Wolf in your camper. Fully integrated cabinet fridge. Maybe there's a reason James Cook's cost $250,000 now. If they still build stuff like this, Pretty incredible, I am mind blown. All right, the kitchen. This is a Kramer gas stove cooktop here. What's that? Can't really tell what that is. I think it pulls up, but here's your burner controls for each side. It can't tell if they're on or off. Maybe that should be off. I'm not 100% sure, but I am 100% sure there's no gas in this thing. Very cool sink right here. Did we look over here? We did, right? Oh no. So there's the drain for the sink and more gas valves. Oh, the gas to the fridge. Duh. So the gas comes up from under the floor right there. There's the toilet for the bathroom sharing that fiberglass space. And here's your water lines. Oh, what's this switch? That's something cool. It tells you what it is right there. If somebody wants to translate that and throw it in the comments for me. So very interesting. And another thing that's very interesting is on the sink. First of all, how sweet is that sink. It probably has like a little stream that just perfectly drops down. I think this has electric switches to turn on the pump. You guys hear it? That's got to be electric switches for the pump. And then this is your chain to your drain stopper there in case you need to wash dishes or something. But now we use pressure drops to turn on the pump. But back in the day, they must have actually used physical electric switches in the valve to turn on their pump. And this obviously will open just like the other one flip it open right there this magnifier works really well you can actually see everything behind you when you're backing up i love it i was using that earlier and mind blown by how well i could see but so if we open that more there we go we can have some airflow and of course before we head up front let's take a look at this the shore power input right there with like i assume what's a gfci it either trips there oh that's test so yeah it's a gfci i bet uh, a power outlet right there, another power outlet right there. This must be a 12 volt power outlet if I had to guess. And then Westphalia heat or water temp, I'm not sure. And then we've got a 10 amp breaker there, 10 amp fuse, 10 amp fuse. And what's this one? Air conditioning or something like that. Maybe it's the test. And then water level, battery level, and gas something. So. Kind of a cool control panel, a little bit hard to understand because I'm not quite sure what that is, but that's really awesome. It must be water temp, it must be water temp. We got a little fire extinguisher action right here. You always wanna have a fire extinguisher in your camper. You might be stuck in a confined space with a bunch of people inside. So you do wanna have that on tap. And then up here, of course, it looks like if we just do one of these maneuvers on both sides, it should flip down. Oh, ho, ho. look how big it is. I did not expect it to be gigantic. This thing flips up. It's actually kind of hard to do. It flips up and then it flips up and then it flips up. And then one handed is tricky. And then you've got an entire bed and you use, of course, the countertop and the seat to climb up there. That's what I did when I was a kid and I had to go into these sleeper berths up there. So it looks like you just kind of climb all over, monkey your way up into bed and pass out. And there's three cushions up there, possibly four. So you can really lay out and have a ton of room. Honestly, a very comfy sleeping setup. And if your head's up here, you can sit up almost. You can almost fully sit up. And then whoever's downstairs has plenty of room to sit up. This is the master. This is for the kids. Another cool high roof benefit, check out that window up there. I know the sun's shining straight through it, but if your head's right here, you can just wake up and look right outside, watch the sunrise, whatever, get some air going in here. And it looks like there's also possibly, that's it, it's a sunshade. I was like, it sure looks like a, oh wow, a two part sunshade. That is luxury. So if you just wanna block some light, you know, you want some light coming in, you got that, privacy. And then if you wanna block all the light, Go to sleep, you got that. Oh, they snap together too. I just noticed every single window in this camper has the same shade system, which is incredibly nice. Roll down for blackout, roll up for privacy. That is well done. This is, this is luxury, guys. And say so you need some additional privacy from the gigantic all glass front end up there that's letting in a ton of light, 
Well, you got these curtains that snap together so you can hide out in the back or uh, even hang out back here with some privacy while somebody drives. So that is a quick tour of the best vintage camper van I have ever seen. I'm sure you could, you know, experience the same thing for a quarter million dollars today, but this is honestly very, very impressive for its day. You might want air conditioning in the summer, but if you can get some air moving through here, it's probably totally fine, especially if that fan runs all night off of those giant batteries. All right, we've done the tour here. Let's close this giant door, which it looks like we need to push this button back here then pull it out of its detent. Nice, shuts really nicely. All right, coming up front on the passenger door, we do have hand crank windows and it looks like this is the lock. Nice snappy Mercedes locks little door handle right there and that's pretty much everything on the passenger side no glove box all you get is this little place to leave some papers or what's probably your flip-flops or something like that while you're on a road trip across country so that is the passenger side let's head over to the driver's side where the real magic happens in this thing the mercedes 309d chassis is powered by the om617 straight five cylinder diesel engine. It makes about 80 horsepower, I know, anemic. It is anemic, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. And 124 foot pounds of torque. That is less than basically everything that's been made in the last 20 years. Almost no power, but they say it's one of the most reliable diesel engines ever made. I forgot I left that open. I might have to run back there and lock it, but I like that I can release it from out here. Almost no power, and you can tell it has almost no power People are a little bit upset if when you try to drive this on modern roads. It takes quite a while to leave a stoplight. But they say it'll go a million miles without a rebuild, and a lot of them have done a million miles without a rebuild, which is kind of cool. I mean, that's the price you pay. It's the reason the old 7.3 Power Stroke is so legendary. It's a terrible engine. It makes zero power, but it runs forever because it makes no power. This is another example of that. The Chevy 350 old engines that were not good. The tolerances are worthless, but they never break. Anyway, enough about old engines. It's what's in this thing, and it's obviously a very reliable choice and maybe what you want when you're out on a road trip and you don't want the thing to break. We've got a plastic pocket here on the door panel that looks aftermarket. And then down here, I guess we have the service kit every three to 900 miles. It says Yulo. Cool, we got the, is this the BMW screwdriver? It might be the Mercedes screwdriver, oh, made in Japan. Well, who knows, it could be Honda's screwdriver, I doubt that. We've got a, the warning triangle down here. We've got the jack right here, a very, very cool jack design, check that out. I'm assuming you spin it down to release it. Uh, and there's like a flashlight right there as well. That is honestly one of the coolest jacks I've ever seen. Just a bevel gear and a drive gear, that's, Pretty sweet. I wonder if there's supposed to be a cover here. It looks like there is, but a brand new battery in there, some Mercedes parts in there, and of course the best stuff for your diesel power service is hanging out in there as well. Around the front of the seat, we have a first aid kit that looks brand new, probably original to this thing. And that would make sense because this thing only has 43,000 original miles on it. So let's hop in and take you on a tour of the driver's seat and then get it out on the road. This may be the easiest cockpit tour I've ever taken you guys on in my life. Uh, there's not a lot to talk about here, so we're gonna talk about it very quickly. First of all, there's this gigantic steering wheel right here, like the old cab over trucks. You get a ton of leverage on these big giant wheels. Mercedes star in the center, and of course, that is the horn too. The horn actually doesn't activate if the ignition's not on. Kind of interesting. Let's close the door here real quick. I did talk about the driver door. We have crank windows, little handle, and of course the lock right there. These are not wing windows. There's a lot of visibility, but they're not wing windows, which is interesting. The wipers are right here along with the turn signals. And it looks like, yeah, high beam, down for high beam, and then wiper controls, push for spray, and turn signals are up and down. So that is the entire control stock right there. Up here, we've got the pretty typical Mercedes light control, just bigger. And we got parking lights and then headlights. And of course, uh, pull for front fog probably and pull again for rear fog. And then if you go back to zero, it sucks back down and the lights are off. And it looks like also front parking and rear parking. A lot of controls there in the light switch. Here in the instrument cluster, we have the water temp, the panel dimmer, high beam light, glow plug light, turn signals, maybe security. I'm not quite sure what that one there is. Maybe shore power, maybe the heat's on. I'm not really sure. 
big giant speedometer, 43,000 miles on the clock, the charging light, the brake warning light, the oil pressure light, fasten belts, and then of course a diesel gauge and a clock. That's it, that's everything that's on that cluster. I wonder where that went. No keyless go, no NFC cards, no fingerprint reader. It's a key. So you guys understand how that works. I don't have to mention it. You know, the more I look at this, the more I wonder if it's that. I don't know what that could be, but it's possible that's what it is. We got a little diagram there that says how tall this thing is. We've got our climate control right here. Defrost. Wow, these run really nicely. Hot and cold. There's no AC, just hot and cold and heat. Throttle, which is interesting. I'm not quite sure what that is. I assume you turn this and it turns the engine speed up to charge the batteries or something, but you'd think it would like turn and pull out like a normal engine throttle and it doesn't. I'm not quite sure what that does. So we might play with it a little bit. And then fan speed is right there, low, high, and then off in the middle. Little 12 volt accessory right there. A giant ashtray. Oh, that sounds good right there. Oh, cool. sorry about that, but we're gonna leave it in. Hazards, the hazards are hazarding. And of course, the head unit right there with cassette and AM FM. Not only is the radio right there, the engine's right there as well because it is a cab over. So if you need to work on your diesel, you can get to it right there. And then here is the transmission and the parking brake. And you can see the layout here. It's a dog leg thing with reverse all the way up and over. And then you come back down in into first and then second, third, fourth, fifth. Reverse to first is a little tricky, but first to second is incredibly tricky. I've been double clutching to get it to go into second quite a few times. It's not grinding or doing anything like that. It's just a weird throw. It's a really weird throw to get used to that first to second there. First is easier to find than second, that's for sure. So you might just take off in second because it's a pretty normal gear ratio for taking off. If you're on a hill, you better be in first. If you're on flat ground, second is no problem at all in this thing. It doesn't even flinch. Gigantic windscreen, of course, and these huge sun visors. And then these just appear to be plastic grills that allow air to travel up into the bed above if anyone's hanging out up in the upper bunk. And is this the, look at that, double dome light. And it's hella and the switch works perfectly. That's incredible. Does the door switch work? We gotta find out. Okay, is that off and then this is door? Hey, wow, that is very nice. I'm surprised all of that works perfectly. Normal flip to dim rear view mirror and that's it. That's all the options, all the features there are to show you on this thing. So let's get it out on the road and talk about it. First of all, we gotta start this thing up. So it's in gear right now. Give it a little wiggle right there and we're ready to rock. So we'll throw the key in, clutch in, of course. Watch this thing start, guys. <laughs> and it's a diesel! You gotta give it a little bit of RPM and then the battery light shuts off as soon as it comes off idle. So it must wait to see a certain amount of voltage right there. And now we're gonna go ahead and put it in reverse. There's reverse. I'm not gonna touch anything, I'm just gonna let the clutch out. That's it. I'm not doing anything. It's just backing up all by itself. All you gotta do is steer because these gears are absolute crawl gears. And now that we went backwards, I do wanna show you guys first gear because it's hilarious. So over, down, and now I'm gonna let the clutch out again. You almost don't have to feather the clutch at all because this is the crawl gear. If you wanna ghost ride the whip, this is it. I will say if you're gonna ghost ride the whip, take precautions. You want somebody to be in the vehicle in case a door locks on you. Otherwise, I would jump out right now and do a little ghost riding if, if I had somebody with me. But I haven't touched the pedal. I haven't touched the brake. I I just pointed it in a line and it's driving. I bet this does really well off-road. Even a hint of throttle would give you the torque you need to get, get through some stuff. It does have good power steering and you have good leverage. So that's also pretty cool. And of course, look, you can see right in front of the thing. I wasn't kidding about the sight lines. So we'll give it a little throttle here. Let it do a little climbing. And then let's actually find out how fast it goes in first gear because the answer is not fast. So you can hear we're turning quite a few RPM right now and we're not even going 10. That's a lot of RPM. There's 10 and I'd say that was probably close to red line. 
so there's second gear. We're gonna get into it a little bit here. Oh, 15, baby! All right, second gear will go 20, look at that. Honestly, 20 in second gear is better than I expected. It's kind of moving along in second gear there. Uh, I do want to see if the body roll, look at this thing. Oh yeah, it feels like it might flip on you if you just steer a little bit. So like I said, now I just take off in second gear, because it's, and you don't want to have to stop in this thing. You want to try to keep it going all the time. So you want to roll through there, second gear, Third gear, adding a little power. Fourth gear, little power again. We're almost to the limit here. That's fifth gear and we're at the speed limit. And you might be able to get to the 50 mark, but you probably shouldn't. This is about what it was built for. So that's what it's like to drive the Westfalia. The cab over is great, visibility amazing. Uh, people are kind of upset with you for driving this on modern roads because you can't speed up to uh, you know the flow of traffic in time. A lot of uh, going around. So let's jump back into second there. And third. Third's a little fun to get into. If you're not actually on a hill, I like to skip fourth and just go three to five just to save time. All the gears are so short, you probably want to start in second, maybe grab third, and then just move right on to fifth. There is no overdrive. So fifth, uh, like I said, you're lucky to go 55. That's They've said that's as fast as it will go. 50 is pushing it. 45, it's pretty happy, and right now we're going 40 and it's comfy. The engine's not turning a lot of RPM, and I'm not gonna push it past that. So that's what it's like to drive. We got some old school classic rock in the cassette player, and the radio does work. Everything seems like it works great. It's really, really nice. I don't have many other thoughts on driving this thing. You just kind of cruise around and enjoy it. Maybe take it to some car shows. You might take it over landing, but let's be honest. We're all pretty used to having air conditioning these days, and this doesn't. So uh, it's it's a very, very cool piece. Personally, not going camping in it unless it's winter time or the fall. That, that would be my time to get this thing out. Also, you usually want to downshift through all the gears because the brakes aren't they're not amazing. Also, like I mentioned, it's a little bit hard to find second gear. So if you downshift your way up to your stops, stoplights, things like that, uh, you can leave it in second, which is a great place to be so you don't have to go hunting for it. So another reason, it's a lot easier than standing on the brakes and uh, the engine braking is actually pretty incredible from this old naturally aspirated diesel. We're flying right now, baby, 45. Oh yeah, wide open road. Well, if you want the coolest vintage camper van I've ever seen and you've probably ever seen, keep watching Bring a Trailer. This will pop up in the next couple of weeks and you've got a chance to buy it. Huge thank you to the seller for letting me drive this before it heads on to the next phase of its life. And that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchchairgo.com for cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time 40 mile an hour baby let's go a really good looking 40 mile an hour i can tell you that <laughs>